appreciate everybody joining us this morning. Good looking crowd. We broke a little bit over the last few weeks. Amen. Good to see some of you back with us. Uh, let, me, let me get a couple of uh, announcements out of the way. First off, uh, those of you that are out in the parking lot listening, uh, you may want to pay close attention to this. We're going to have to change our amp back there in the back that controls the outside speakers. The one we got back there now is going out on So if you lose me, about 45 minutes in, I mean, that seems to be where it's cutting off at. We've cut it down a little bit, maybe help out with that. So if you are outside listening, uh, I would encourage you to get close to one of the speakers, uh, as close as you can. But we did have to turn them down a little bit to avoid that. We do have another amp coming. we get that chained out, and that'll take care of that, okay? And that's for all of you outside. <clears throat> and then for everybody else, it's good to have you with us this morning. Appreciate you being here. Those folks that are joining us, you being with us, and then also too, I uh, appreciate everybody coming into church this morning. Anyway, uh, good to see you out with us today. Some of the first time we've seen us, and it's good to see you out with us today. Now, I'm going to give you a something you may want to keep in mind. As you know, if you've watched on TV like I have, we've had an awful lot of rioting going on in our big cities, and I'm just giving you fair warning. Better, you know, don't stone the messenger, him book the messenger. I'll just tell you what I see. I have noticed in the last two or three days, driving around the Tri Cities, I've seen an awful lot of tags from Davidson, Cheatham, Dickinson, and Rutherford County. As you all know, those are counties in and around where Nashville, Tennessee is, which is our hot spot. I can't blame those folks. The reason I say that is, church. They've been under quarantine for three months. Now you got rights, and they are leaving those areas. Okay? Uh, just to give you a little heads up, last month we had a 20% increase in home sales. And you may not realize that. So I'm just, like I say, I'm just a messenger. You, you better, you know, heed the warnings. And I, and I know we're trying to back off the mask, and I, I'd love to more than anything, but I would advise you. Wear them more than I would. Okay? Because you are getting people from out of our area that are coming here from the big cities. They are leaving. And, and you've seen what's happened on TV the way I've seen what's happened on TV. Okay? And, you know, I, to be honest, you know, what happened uh, concerning uh, Floyd, uh, that was wrong. I mean, police officers tell you around this nation that that's not how that's handled. And what happened to him was awful. And I believe the people drop the protest. I believe they have that right. But in my observation, I've seen protests during the day and seen at night. Okay? Uh, that's what I've seen. In, in regards to how you feel about Martin Luther King, the one thing that he did know how to do was protest peacefully. And I hope that folks will realize that I think what the Atlanta mayor, I believe it was her, I believe what she said was spot on. You know, this is not how we do this. Civil and what we're doing. So, so do, do remember our nation and your prayers and what's happening around us. I, I would strongly encourage you, like I said, I wear my mask a lot more than I usually do. I mean, I just going through town yesterday, I just saw a lot of that. And, you know, our guidelines are to wear them, you know, in, in church as much as possible. So I would keep that in mind and make sure I still maintain my social distancing as best as I can uh, for now because you don't know. I hope this don't set us back. I mean, we continue on the path that we're going. Uh, in our area, we have no active cases. And if we continue on the path we're going, hopefully by the middle of this month, we can put a lot of things behind us. But what's happening in these big cities may set us back. So do be aware of that. If you are planning on uh, vacating and so forth, uh, I, I make sure I check out what's going on in the area that I'm going to and just pay attention, okay? And, and be wise as a serpent. Said, you know, I'm just trying to help you out on that. And do be sure that you pay attention to what's going on and try to protect yourself as best as you can. All right. So God bless you for being here today. That's just our public service announcements out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like I said, I, I, I want us to get where we want to be like anybody else does. There's a lot of other things I'd like to get opened up. We are uh, doing service tonight at uh, 6 o'clock, our regular time tonight. 
because it, of course, is over when we're still doing our live stream. So we won't have any problems there. And, uh, same thing. Uh, if anything happens, you know, in light of what's taken place in our nation over the past week, uh, we'll make announcements to the, accordingly. If anything changes right now, the governor has listed out guidelines. They're not mandates, but they are guidelines. Uh, I would fear he was hoping to ease some of those up uh, here in the, the coming days. Unfortunately, what's happened in our state uh, down around Nashville, you saw last night too, uh, may change that a little bit. So do keep that in mind. Let's go. I tell you what, if you would, stand your feet, grab your hymn. <clears throat> Let's do us some singing this morning. What's got, Brother Ken? 2.30. You stand and sing with us. Bible says in Ephesians 2.8, For by grace are you saved through faith. I'm glad this morning that God's grace is greater than my past. It's greater than my sin. It's greater than anything you see going on in America today. Yeah. God's grace is sufficient. Ain't that good? Yeah. Everything that I need, I have in Him through His grace. Yeah. If that's not something to make you shout this morning, Amen. if that's not something to make you happy, I don't know why you're praying. Yeah. I'm not worried about what's going on around me. Because the grace of God falls on me. <laughs> he loves me so good, he give it to me as a gift. Ain't that something? We are so busy worried about dying. We're forgetting to live. Eh? We've got a beautiful day this morning. We've got a beautiful sanctuary to be in. Everybody here this morning is healthy. You drove in in a nice car. You're dressed nice. I say we praise him. Amen. He's worthy, ain't he? Amen. We're going to sing this a cappella. Amazing grace. Thank you. 
Bible says that his spirit, the Holy Spirit, inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. When's the last time not because somebody beside of you got blessed that they praised you, so you did. But when's the last time you just held your hand up and said, Lord, I just want to praise you for who you are. God, you brought me safe thus far. No matter what's happened in the world, God, today I'm, I'm safe. I'm healthy. I've had something to eat. I've got a bed to sleep in. I've got a roof over my head. God, I've got a good family. Lord, I just want to praise you. The Bible says it's in spirit. His spirit now inhabits the praises of his people. Man. So let's Man. do this. Man. If you want to praise him this Man. morning, let's sing it this way. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.
enjoyed that. Say amen. 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 Oh, I did. That was really good. Really, really good. Preacher. Good man. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you coming out and being with us today. Appreciate you being here. If you've got your Bibles this morning, turn to uh, John chapter 14. John 14. While you're turning over there, I do have several announcements for prayer. I'll go over those in, in tonight's service. I do just want to real quickly speak up about those that have had the deaths in their families. Please remember them in prayers. Uh, as I told you, it's Friday. I attended my first graveside service. I've attended in three months. I went to Red Hint with Doug Regulus and his sister. So do remember those families in your prayers. John chapter 14, verses 5 and 6. When you find your place, uh, stand with us for the reading of God's Word. John 14, 5 and 6. It's good to see folks with us. Like I said, we haven't seen you in a while. It's good to see you back with us. It's good to see you here. Everybody's familiar with this verse. Most of us could probably quote it. It says, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Preach this morning. Do you know Jesus? Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the wonderful scene we've got to hear. Thank you so much for our church family. Uh, as we said a few moments ago, we, we get to see a lot of them that we haven't seen in a few weeks. And Father, we're really praying hard that things will continue to improve day by day, week by week. Uh, Father, we look forward to being able to take the tape off and everybody be able to be with us. And Father, we just look forward to that. Father, I pray. That right now, that you just continue to meet with us this morning. Uh, may you just walk up down the aisles today and speak to hearts. If there's somebody here today that's, that's not right with you, maybe they don't know you, Jesus. And I thought I pray that you just really reveal yourself to them today. And what's preached this morning will help them to understand that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And Father, I pray for those that are watching, uh, those that are outside listening, that you speak to all hearts. And Father, we, we also ask you today to use us as a vessel. Father, I can't preach unless the Holy Spirit of God preaches through me. Father, we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You can be seated. Do you know Jesus? You know, if you haven't had a chance, <clears throat> I put out a, a live stream Sunday school lesson Friday uh, about what's uh, going on in the world, what's happening. And I'm going to tell you something. You better make sure you say Amen. Okay? I, I mean... And I, and I said this three or four times Friday. I cannot make this stuff up. What we've seen over the last three months, and then you look over the last four or five days, and things that are happening, uh, I mean, these are not happening in foreign countries, folks. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's not happening across the sea. It's happening here in the United States. Uh, the, the COVID thing and then the rioting that we're seeing, all those things are happening here. You better make sure you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Now, I make that statement a lot. And I'm pretty sure, and I know most of you in here in this morning are right the Lord. You know him, but we've got a lot of folks that may be watching us on Facebook. And there's some folks maybe out in the park, maybe some folks in here that may not know who Jesus is. And here in, in chapter uh, John, chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus gives you three things to know about. Three very important things to know about him. To help you understand what he is about. And here we see those three things he mentions. Thomas asked him a direct question. He says, we know not whether you're goes, but how can we know the way? And Jesus responds back to him. First off, he says, I am the way. Why is Jesus Christ the way? I'll tell you why he's the way. He paid the sin debt. Amen. You know, as we look out across our nation today at what's going on, do you know what calls all the right? Sin. Sin. That's exactly what's caused it. Sin has caused that. What you're seeing happening nationwide is happening in homes. It's happening, if we look here, it's also happening in lives. It's happening in cities, as we see. And now it's happening in our country. That's how dangerous that sin is. It will always be the number one problem. COVID-19 is here and eventually it will pass. Any other diseases hopefully will eventually pass. But sin's not going anywhere. I'm trying. 
And here's the thing. Only Jesus Christ can effectively deal with sin. That's why he is the way. He dealt with it. Mohammed did not deal with sin. The Hindu God did not deal with sin. Buddhists do not deal with sin. Secularism does not deal with sin. We can go all the way down that list. None of those things deal with sin. Only through Christ can you have an effective way to deal with sin. The Bible says there, it destroys lives, homes, cities, and nations. We're seeing it play out before our very eyes. We also see in Mark chapter 15, verses 37 and 38, when Christ gave his life on Calvary's cross, the Bible says that the temple veil went to. I said this last week, if you come to Justin to forget, get your forgiveness of sins, you're wasting your time and mine. Amen. Amen. I don't have the power to do that. No priest has the power to do that. No preacher has the power to do that. Nobody has the power to do that. Only Christ got the power to do that because he bought and paid for it. He gave his life for that, opportunity to do that. You know, I listened to a guy last night, and I thought it was very interesting. He was a preacher, and he's black. And I tell you what, he hit the nail on the head. He said, what we got in our nation right now, it's not just a race problem or things like that. What we got in our nation right now, we got a sin problem. Amen. We got a spiritual problem going on. There's things that are wrong. Folks have lost their fear of God. Amen. Am I preaching to the right crowd? Amen. How about that there in the parking lot? Are we preaching to the right crowd? Amen. May not be listening right now. But that's our problem. You know, we've let secularism kind of take over. How's that working out for you today? Yeah. Amen. How's that? Every man does that which is right according to his own eyes. How's that relativism working out for you this morning? I'm going to preach a little bit so you can either pour gasoline on this fire or do what you want to do. Amen. Amen. How's that working out for you this morning? That's right. Yeah, it's not working too good, is it? You know, we've gotten away from the things of God and embraced the things of secularism and it's destroying our country. It's destroying the next generation coming up. I heard a guy last night, one of the congressmen get on there, he sees what I see out there as a bunch of kids that had their butts busted. Amen. Am I preaching the right crowd? Amen. How's it working out for you right now, huh? How's secularism going for you right now? How's relativism going for you right now? It's not working too good. You say, preacher, what do we need to do? We need to get back to the way. What Christ said, he is the way. You're not going to find it in man's philosophy. Man can tell you wrong. I mean, look at this disease itself. It changes on a daily and a weekly basis what they're telling you to do. You say, why, preacher? Because they don't know. Friend, you're living in the last days. I hope you realize that. Look what's going on around you. There's a lot of folks that are apathetic to what's happening in around our nation. I'm just being honest this morning. I go out and I listen to folks sit at their tables and eat. I listen to folks that I walk around the Walmarts. Cities are burning. They're literally burning down. And folks in the rest of the nation, here in the rural areas, we're just apathetic to it. We've seen it before. We've seen it play out. It doesn't matter where loss of life or loss of business or loss of income or loss of livelihood. It just don't affect us no more. Amen. The Bible says the love of many will grow cold because iniquity abounds. That's right. That's what Jesus said. You're seeing it all play out. Christ is the way. Here's the thing. Christ only can be your intercessor. You know, I don't understand why folks today still think that a priest or a preacher could be your intercessor. We can't. We can't do that. I can't intercede for my own kids, much less for you. I can't intercede for my own wife, much less for you. Only Christ can do that. Amen. He is your intercessor between you and God. Amen. It's time as, as, as Christians, time as a country, we start putting aside these things that are wrong. Amen. Put aside these things that are false. Amen. And realize there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Amen. Amen. And that Christ still sits on the throne. Amen. We notice there too about the way. The way symbolizes a path. It is narrow. Realize that? It's narrow. For as you walk on it, you're never alone. Here, here's the thing.
thing. And I'm not being mean. I'm just being honest. I go visit nursing homes. My wife works in an assisted living place. Brother Mike Gravio back there. Some of you others work in nursing home. I don't see Carolyn here today. Some of you, you know what I'm talking about. The day may come that in this walk of life, your family can no longer walk with you. That may happen. It may happen to, to us. Today we may be as healthy as we can be. Life may be great, but you don't know what tomorrow brings. Amen? You don't know what next week brings. You don't know what 10 years down the road will bring. But here's the thing on that narrow way. You may find yourself alone as far as this life goes, but as far as Christ is concerned, you'll never be alone. He says, I'll never leave, nor I will I forsake. As you make your way in this Christian life, Jesus Christ will always walk with you. Always. He is the way. Only through Him can we find mercy. Only through Him can we find grace. Amen. I wish folks would realize that. I'm only doing the best that I can do to tell them. Some of you sitting out there this morning, some of you watching on Facebook, some of you sitting out there in the parking lot, you're doing the best you can to tell them. And yes, I'm afraid we're reaching a point in our country, if this don't start to wake us up and make us realize that we better turn around, <clears throat> then there's going to be a lot of folks left here. Let me tell you something. God will do what He can to get your attention. You listen to this, you'll listen to anything else. God will do what He can to get your attention. But sooner or later, he's going to go about his business. Amen. And his business is getting his people out of here. Amen. You better perk up. You better listen up. You better make sure you're saved up. Amen. Amen. So he is the way. Look at the next thing he said there. This is about knowing Christ. We know him as the way. Also, he says, he says, I am the truth. Why is he called the truth? Because Christ is the word made flesh and dwelt among us, John 1 and 14. Even in the secular world, if you live by the truth that Christ taught you, <clears throat> everybody with me, give me a head nod, and amen. If you live by what Christ taught you, and do the best you can, <clears throat> as the Bible says, to strive by the Master, okay? To strive for the Master. Even the secular world will look at you and say, you're living righteously. Yeah. They may not agree in the fact that you believe Christ. They may not believe or may not accept the fact or believe the fact that of creationism. They may not believe in God, may not believe in anything you stand for. But if you live the way Christ teaches in the Word of God and the truth that He spoke, they will at least concede the fact that you're living righteously. Amen. My heart goes out. The police department right now. Yeah, amen. I'm gonna say this. I mean, and I got convicted over it, Brother Shannon, this week. And it bothers me today. But I tell you what, the next opportunity comes up, I don't care if there's five or six of them in there. I'm buying her lunch. Amen. You know, I walked in there and the guy was getting his lunch. One of our city guys. And, you know, my mind was on a lot of things. And as I paid for my stuff, what I got in the car. It hit me, Justin, you should have bought that guy's lunch. What he's dealing with right now, even though he's in Elizabeth and Tennessee, all you're hearing is police this, police that. I got news for you. The guy's name is Derek Shalom. Last time I checked, every person's accountable for their own sin personally. Amen. Amen. Am I missing something? Amen. Amen. He is responsible for what happened. Not the guys here in Elizabeth, not the guys in Carter County, not the guys in the state of Tennessee or any other state, even the rest of the police department in Minneapolis. They are not responsible. Derek Siobhan and those other three guys are the responsible parties. Amen. 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 They're responsible for that. Nobody else is. And I challenge you this week. I don't care where you're listening from or where you're watching from. You see one of them out, you ought to walk up to us, hey man, lunch is on me. I want you to know I got you back and I appreciate you. Even Martin Luther King when he got his marches, this is what the guy said last night. He said, look, Martin Luther understood that if he wanted to get things changed, he had to get the other race involved. And he got them involved. He understood if he wanted things to change, he's got to get the police department involved. And you go back and you look at some of those marches they've done, and you're going to see folks of all races, folks of all job titles, even some police officers marching along with them. Amen. If you want to make change, 
make change. Amen. Amen. That's how it's done. You got to get people involved. Unfortunately, this guy here and what he's done has really caused problems. I also see where police officers go out and they'll go to neighborhoods and they'll go by and get some snacks and they'll go out and sit on the stairs with a bunch of kids and feed them snacks. Why ain't we celebrating what they're doing? Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Christ is the truth. And the truth will stand when the world's on fire, friend. Amen. I will say that. He says, I am the truth. He was made flesh. If you follow the truth, Jesus spoke and how he lived. As I said, even the secular world has to call you righteous. Jesus was always honest. Now, here's where rubber meets the road. You know where such statements as where the worm dieth not? You know who said that? Christ did. You know who said he will be cast out in the iron dark or they're weeping and gnashing of teeth? That's not in black letter text, folks. That's in red letter text. Christ said that. Amen. The rich man and Lazarus, a true story that Christ gave. That's all in red letter text. For those of you that's not familiar with Bibles, when you study the four Gospels, if you see red letter text in your Bible, Christ actually spoke those things. Amen. I repeat, Christ preached hell three times. There were one time he preached heaven. Folks better get their fear back. It was Christ that said God can destroy both soul and body in hell. Jesus said that. The very Christ that loves all also did the best that he could and he was brutally honest about it to warn folks there is a heaven to gain, there is a hell to shun. Right. Amen. And your sin will put you there. Right. Everybody's out there, oh God, ain't put. No. Your sin puts you there. Amen. You made the decision not to get Christ as your Savior. You make the decision to reject the intercessor. When you reject the intercessor, sin cannot live in the presence of God. The Bible says there is no place found for them. Hence, hell. Jesus was brutally honest. And here's the thing I've learned in my life. You can trust people that are brutally honest. That's right. Amen. You may not like what comes out in their mouth. But if they're being honest with you, you at least have a level of trust with them Amen. and belief in them. That's right. Make no mistake, Christ loves you. How much? That much. Amen. He's got the scars in his hands, the scars in his feet, the scar in his side, the blood that he shed, the life that he gave, everything he does, he does for you because he loves you. Amen. If you were the only person, the only person upon this world and God said they're not going to make it into heaven. And if somebody goes in there and die for them, Christ would make a way to come down here and die for you. Amen. If there was only one person in this world of eight to nine billion people that would believe Jesus Christ as Savior, just one, Christ would still come and die for all. That's the Savior I serve. That's the Savior I believe in. That is the Savior I trust. He is the truth. He was always honest. We go through there a little bit further. We see his honesty. Because of it, you can trust him. You can believe him. His wisdom and compassion and action towards others are someone you can believe in. I don't know of anybody else that went around and opened blinded eyes. That's right. Spitting in the ground. Yeah, amen. I don't know of anybody else that would walk by and lepers holler out. I'll tell you what. I ain't touching no leper. Amen. You say, preacher, you didn't trust. I trust God, but God also says don't tempt him. Yeah. God also says be wise as a serpent. Amen. Don't swallow trouble too big for you. Amen. Right. Amen. I'm not touching lepers. Unless God, God speaks to me with an audible voice and tells me to go and touch a leper, that he'll be healed, then I might do it Amen. with a lot of coaxing. Amen. Amen. I'm just being honest. See, that's how folks felt Jesus' day. Are you out of your mind? That guy's know 
nose has fell off. That guy's ear has fell off. Are you out of your mind? His skin off his face has fallen off. Even if you heal him of the leprosy, he's going to be the ugliest person we've ever seen. Lo and behold, when Christ touches them, not only do they get their nose back, their ears back, they get their facial features back, and I'll be honest with you, I believe their skin was more pure than anybody else's from the time Christ touched them till the time they died. That's the Savior I serve. His actions, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, the biggest action that Christ ever done was raising the dead. I don't know about you. That gets my attention. So we see that. He's always honest. And because that you believe and trust Him, His actions, His compassion towards others. Truth symbolizes the Word of God. The Bible says, hide it in your heart. That is the best way to know Christ and to know about Him is to know His Word. To understand His truth. Get your nose in the Word of God. You say, preacher, why are folks lost their fear? Why are people running around acting like they're acting? Or why are folks, yeah, why? Because they're not studying the Word. Even Christians. Can I get a witness in here? Do you realize today, and I've said this and I'll say it till I'm blue in the face, and I'm really trying to appeal to folks, not just you, but those folks watching this on Facebook that may not go to church. Let me tell you something, friend. You've got no excuse not to know the Bible. Amen. Do you realize what's at your fingertips with your phone right now? I mean, you can sit back there with a the phone at this very moment. Now, if you're on Facebook, I'm going to preach at you. You're in here. You can hear me just fine. If you're on there shopping, y'all be ashamed. <laughs> but you can sit back there with your phone. You can look at everything that I'm preaching on. You can type in there commentaries about John 14, 5, and 6. As I preach it, you can sit there and read some of the things that's said by other men. And boy, you can leave here fully knowledgeable about John 14, 5, and 6. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. That's the amount of technology and the amount of knowledge about the Word of God that's out there. As this world has got more wicked, God has made more of a way for folks to know who He is. That's right. And it is our fault that we don't. Amen. Nobody else's. So Christ has done all that He can. You've got to know His Word. So, He is the way. He is the truth. Lastly there, He is the life. Amen? Why is He the life? Because He arose the third day. I've been there. I'm telling you right now, it's empty. Whether you believe it like we believe, it was on Golgotha's Hill, that one place, that the name escapes me. The tomb they call where they, they take it, where we were actually taken, or whether you believe as the, the other groups believe that it was at that church. It don't matter, both of them's empty. Amen. 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 They still not found his body. On top of that, the Bible even tells you, even history tells you, folks saw him after he died. Amen. Over 500 witnesses. And who knows how many more saw him Amen. That's right. before he ascended back into heaven. I mean, let's, let's deal in reality a little bit. The disciples, when Christ first appeared to them, they were setting themselves up in a room trying to determine what they were going to do. What do we go from here? I preached on that a few weeks ago. What are we going to do? We don't know if he's alive. We don't know if he's still dead. We don't know if he's went on to heaven. We don't know where to go. And guess who shows up? Jesus does. Amen. Guys, here's a direction or the way you need to go. He laid out the pathway for them. Said, get about building the church. Forget about spreading the gospel. Do what you need to do. This is how you do it. And Jesus spent those 40 days doing some more training and teaching and preparation. And today, here you sit or here you watch or you're outside sitting and listening. Amen? Amen. Evidently, somebody saw something. He is alive. Amen. And lives forevermore. Only through Christ and believing and confessing Him as your personal Savior can a person hope to have eternal life. You know, I, I look back at this officer, Derek's his name. His life here is ruined. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, 25 years, I think, is what I saw in his 
uh, third degree murder statute, 25 years. He may get more than that. He'll forever be haunted by that man's hollers and cries for help. Are you listening, church? Trust me. He's going to forever be haunted by that. That will never leave him. He is going to forever be haunted by the fires that burnt in Minneapolis, D.C., New York, Philadelphia, Nashville, Phoenix, Los Angeles, Reno, Nevada. Just about every major metropolitan city in the United States of America. A lot of folks did peacefully, but some folks did not. And you saw the fires the same as I did. That will forever haunt him. People that were quarantined for three months, that were finally getting, at least to be able to get some semblance of their life back. Watched it go up in flames over the last three or four days. Yeah. As Kenny said a few moments ago, you ought to praise God you live in Elizabeth and Tennessee. Amen. You ought to praise God you live in Johnson City or in the Tri-Cities area. You ought to be praising God Amen. that you're able to come into the house of God and worship Him. You ought to praise God that there's zero active cases in Carter County. Yeah, we ought to take laps around the church this morning to be honest Amen. with you. Amen. That's just being honest this morning. We all take laps around the church. Amen. I grant it's been tough. It's not been easy. I ain't liked it any more than you have. I hope we get further past this thing so other things can happen. But here's the thing. We've been blessed. Amen. Most of you that I'm looking at out there, most of you have got to work. Some of you, if you weren't at, you're at least you're able to go back to now. I mean, here's the thing, friend. These folks in those towns lost everything. Yeah. That will forever Halt. There. But here's the Jesus I serve. Here's where it gets real. My hope is, is that as all this goes through, I hope some child of God, whether it's a man or a woman, preacher, deacon, trustee, or just a born-again Christian that cares, gets in there and Derek sells says, Derek, buddy, a lot of people's lives have been changed forever from what's happened. Yeah, your life in this world is going to be tough from here on out. But I'm going to tell you right now, I know a man. That's right. Amen. 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 I may put my mask on and take some laps here in a minute. I know a man. He is the way, the truth. But here's the part, Derek, I want you to really pay attention to. He is the life. Amen. Your life here may be ruined. Yeah. You'll never get it back. Your wife's already left you. But I'm going to tell you something, friend. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, I can promise you, as God is my witness, as a Savior I believe and I trust, you can have eternal life. Amen. And when you take your last breath, at least you can know when you do it. And you open your eyes. You'll see the face of the Savior I'm telling you about. Yeah. See in John chapter 14 verse 1. He says let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so I would have told you. Boy I like this. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you. Woo! I will. I will. I will receive you. Eternal life. 
He is the way, the truth, and the life. That's how you can know Him. Did you know what? He already knows you. He knows the very number of the hairs on your head. Even my son Landon down here, he knows the number of the hairs on his head. Sorry, Landon, it's the hair. A lot of people in this church can get to that hair, I'll tell you that. He even knows the numbers of my hair I've got in my head and the ones that fell out this week. Thanks to some of you. <laughs> Looks like some of you have had a lot of stress in your life. <laughs> Amen, Brother Brian. Amen, Brother David, Brother Mike. I see you back there. I see you. Give me a little hand wave back there. Brother Don, I see you, buddy. I see you. I see you back there hand waving. Hey, Brother Lewis. Brother Ray, I see you back there. Brother Allen, I see you. I, I see you, Brother. Here, here's the thing, and I'll shut up. Christ says at the end of his thing, no man comes by the Father except by me. Amen. I cannot stress enough. If there's anything you want to make sure of right now, I don't care if you've been saved for 50 years or 50 seconds. Make sure you're right with the Lord. Amen. I, I go back to what I preached on back in February, and then turn around and teach it on Friday. I'm going to tell you something, church. Whether he comes back right now or he comes back five or ten years from now, I'm not taking no chances. Amen. I want to make sure I'm where I need to be. I strongly, strongly encourage you to make sure you're where you need to be. The way, the truth, in the life. Aren't you glad to know Jesus as our Savior? Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for what you do for us. Thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for Jesus. Oh, Lord. To be honest with you, Lord, we all think back around the church. We all think back around the city. Just for the very fact that the honest truth is we have an unbelievable Savior has given his life so we can have life. And on top of that, he's alive. And how do I know that he lives, as the psalm says? Because he lives within my heart. Father, we thank you for what you've done for us. As we said, a lot of things around us are happening. There is a lot of fear out there. And, and Father, we, we're really praying hard that, that what's happened in these cities, we won't see them get their lives back. And on top of that, uh, or we're hoping this does not send us back. Uh, I, I mean, I, I want to take yellow tape down. I, I, I want to send choirs. You know, I, I, I want to be able to hug some folks in church. You know, it, it's just, Lord, we, we want to get this past us. And Father, I know you're trying your best to get folks woke up. And, and I hope, and I, I agree with that preacher brother last night. We got spiritual problems in this nation. We got sin problems in this nation. Amen. This secularism, relativism ain't working out so good. I think that's what folks need to take heed of. Only through Christ can we get back what we need. Well, I pray that you speak to hearts as we get ready to dismiss from here. If anybody has any doubts about their salvation, the Bible says in Romans 10 19, believe in thy heart, confess with thy mouth, and thou shalt be saved. Where the heart man believes in the righteous, where the mouth confession is made. They can be saved. They accept Christ as their Savior. Well, once again, we thank you for our church family. Thank you for all of those that have come today. Be with us now. As we get ready to dismiss. Be with us throughout the day. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you for being here this morning. And we'll see you back here at 6 o'clock, okay? And we'll be live and speaking about that again. God bless you. We're dismissed.